Welcome back to Impossible Color. Today I'm going to go over another episode of Save My Photo. Today's beautiful image was submitted by MSYU10. It's an image of the Grand Canyon and I hesitated when I first saw it because I wasn't really sure what I was going to do to improve on it. But after working at it for about an hour I was pretty pleased with the results that I got. I'll show you the after. Uh, the main thing that I went for was to have bring out a lot of the texture and show more drama. Such an epic landscape that I wanted to be able to show all the layers that are going in the background here and show the highlights of the little caps of the mountains and all the details on, on the uh, earth here and just give it a lot more pop. So because this took so long, basically just going to be going through each of the steps. I decided to keep each of the layers here so you can see exactly what I did. So on the first adjustment layer, you can see that I darkened everything. Now the way that you do an adjustment layer is you simply click on your layer that you want to make the adjustment above click on this and you can pick any of these values here and I decided to go with the levels adjustment layer and if you already made one you can click on the symbol here and you can bring it up and change it at any point point. and you can see that I just moved the black slider over to make everything darker Now obviously this doesn't look good because these areas are all clipping out to black. But the sky looks a lot better. You can see way more details in all of these areas that were blocked out by the atmosphere. So we're cutting through all of that haze. Now the way that you make it more isolated is you create a layer mask. So I'm gonna just going to do a quick example of a layer mask in case you don't know how to do that already. So I'm just going to fill a layer with red. Want to make a layer mask, simply click this guy down here. If you paint anything in black, it will show through to whatever's below it. And it just creates a little window. And if you paint anything white, it simply shows what's on the layer. Okay, going back here, you can see that I already made a layer mask. If you ever want to hide it, simply right click it and disable it. And you can do the same thing to bring it back. And you can see that in my layer mask, I painted black down here. This little image represents the black that I painted along here and the white sky is left so basically what's that what that is saying is that i want to reveal all of the level adjustment layer changes that i made here but hide it here and to get that little preview that i have up right now simply hold alt or option on a mac and click on that thumbnail so there's the before and the after that handles all of this sky. But I noticed in the sky there was still a lot of blowout that was happening in this area and up around here and I, I wanted to bring a lot of these details back in. I won't be able to reclaim them all but I can definitely get some improvement. And the way I did that was I created another adjustment layer and you can see this S-shaped curve graph and that represents this one here curves so let's turn on that layer and you can see that there's a lot more details all these mountain details that were hidden before are suddenly revealed so what what did I do in there well I adjusted the curve here and this represents all of the tones in your image and I basically brought all the mid-tones down and it tapers off to the dark and the light. 
So if I was to bring that back up, it just flattens it out. If I was to bring it down, you can see it gets really strong and way too much. So I'll just undo that back to normal. And show the before and after. Now the next stage that I was doing was, it kind of felt like it was lacking contrast. It still felt, felt very flat with the atmosphere. There's a lot of haze that's just making this look very dull. So in order to get rid of that, I first made a black and white adjustment layer. Same thing. Go down here and choose black and white. So I basically converted my entire image to black and white. And what I did was I kept changing these values to make different areas pop. So wherever it was red, I turned it on maximum. And you can see that all the little peaks here are now starting to shine. You really lose those details when you see it in color. Same thing with the yellows. You can see all the details of these little this little brush and some of the striations in the land popping out. I brought the greens down just to give some contrast there. And I just went through all of the values here and made them look ideal for a black and white image. Then what I did was I just duplicated everything that I saw in the changes so far. Ended up with this, but I, I tweaked the uh, contrast a little bit just to exaggerate it even more. Now what I did was I wanted to apply all these tonal changes I made in my black and white conversion to the colored version. I changed it from normal to luminosity. So what that's doing is saying take all the tonal values of what I just changed in the black and white but retain the colors of the image that is showing through below. And you can see I decreased the value a little bit to the opacity down to 75. If you wanted to go really dramatic, you could go all the way up. If you wanted it quite subtle, you could go on the other end. But I wanted to have a really gritty, striking image, so I went for 75%. And here's the before and after at that stage. Now, I felt that I was still having some issues um, in this area down here. It, although I got a lot more contrast, it started to get just a little bit too dark for my liking. So I created another curves adjustment layer. And you can see what I did here. I just brightened up some of these mid-tones that were slightly more on the dark side. So that represents these kind of dark areas that are in this region. So if I turn that on, you can see it brightens up all of those mid-tone values. It doesn't ruin the darks and it doesn't blow out the whites. It just increases those mid-tones that are slightly on the darker side. Now that I got all the tones worked out, my image is looking really close to what I, what I wanted to do, but I felt like the colors could improve a little bit. So all I did was I took a selection of everything so far, and I said, edit, copy merged. Now this will make a copy of everything that you see on the screen in that selection. Then I simply pasted it down So if you turn it on and off, it shouldn't look any different. It's exactly what you just copied. But then I ran an auto color. Now this is something that you may want to avoid thinking that, oh, well, that's a beginner tool. But it actually 
it can often give you some insight to your image that you weren't aware of as you were working along. Uh, I spent some time playing with some different colors and I wasn't happy with it. I actually liked the original colors, but then I decided to come in here and just give it a shot. So I went to image and auto color and I ended up with this. And I ended up turning the value down and the opacity down a little bit and I merged it with the layers below and you can see that it basically warms up the whole image it gets rid of some of that blue atmosphere that was kind of dominating everything there and I find it just makes it a little bit more engaging so again this is what I started with a beautiful image but it's looking a bit flat and as we went through and made all the changes we ended up with this Special thanks again to MSYU10 for submitting your photo. I hope you enjoyed seeing the transformation. If you thought you learned something today, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel or at least gave it a thumbs up and tell your friends about it. If you have your own image that you'd like to submit for another episode of Save My Photo, I'd be happy to check it out. And you can link to it in the comment section below. Thanks for checking out Impossible Color. I'll see you next week.